In this lesson, we look at the environmental factors that affect the rate of transpiration. Environmental factors are due to the surrounding conditions that are determined by the prevailing weather conditions. These factors include temperature, humidity, wind, light intensity, atmospheric pressure, and water availability in the environment. We will start by talking about temperature. High temperature increases the capacity of the atmosphere to hold more water vapor. So as the temperature increases, the water holding capacity of the surrounding air increases. And so the higher the temperature, the higher the water holding capacity of the atmosphere, and hence there's bound to be an increase in the rate of transpiration. In addition, an increase in temperature will also affect the temperature of the leaf. So the internal temperature of the leaf increases and in turn, there will be an increase in the rate of evaporation from the surface of the mesophyll cells. And this will therefore enhance the rate of water loss from the plant. Now this can be illustrated in this simple graph here. When you plot the rate of transpiration, against time of the day. It is assumed that as the times of the day change, the temperature will also change because of the movement of the sun. So from early in the morning at 6 a.m. when the sun is not yet out, the temperatures are low. So we record a relatively low rate of transpiration. But as the day progresses and the sun rises higher and higher, environmental temperatures increase and so does the rate of transpiration. Remember, the increase in the rate of transpiration as a, as a result of an increase in the temperature is due to two processes. One, the increase in the capacity of the air to hold more water vapor and secondly, an increase in the rate of evaporation. So that is the temperature as an environmental factor that greatly influences the rate of transpiration. A second factor that influences the rate of transpiration is humidity. Humidity is a very important factor. In fact, the humidity of a place determines the kind of plants that will survive there because it has a direct bearing on the rate of water loss. Yeah, the rate of transpiration is generally high when the humidity is low. And when the humidity rises, the rate of transpiration will tend to decrease. When the humidity is low, it means that there is very low concentration of water vapor in the atmosphere. And this will therefore promote the fusion of water molecules from inside the leaf to the surroundings, thereby leading to a, a, a high rate of transpiration. Now, you call the saturation deficit that refers to the difference between the water vapor concentration inside the leaf and the surrounding. Saturation deficit is basically a measure of the difference in humidity. So when the humidity is low, the rate of transpiration is bound to be high because of a high saturation deficit. When the surrounding atmosphere has a low humidity, that means that there's a high saturation deficit between the inside of the leaf and the surrounding and this therefore promotes a high rate of transpiration. So this can also be illustrated in this simple graph, where when you plot the rate of transpiration against humidity. So as the humidity increases, 
as the water vapor content in the atmosphere increases, the rate of transpiration will reduce. This is because an increase in humidity will reduce the rate of diffusion, so the water molecules will find it more and more difficult to escape from inside the leaf to the surrounding. But a decrease in humidity results in an increase in the rate of transpiration. So any environmental factor that affects the humidity of the environment will affect the rate of transpiration. There are some environments, there are certain habitats in which the humidity can be so high to the point that normal transpiration cannot take place. Such conditions include in the tropical rainforest. Tropical rainforests have such a high density of plants, all of which transpire. And these then contribute to a very high concentration of water vapor. They contribute to high humidity within that particular habitat, so the normal transpiration cannot take place. Under such conditions, there are some plants that have developed specialized structures, especially along the margins of the leaves, known as hydathodes. Hydathodes are openings, tiny openings along the margins of the leaves, through which excess water can be lost from the plant in the form of liquid in a process known as gutation. So in this photograph here, you can see the water droplets that are being exuded from the plant leaf because the environmental humidity is so high such that the normal transpiration rate is not enough to get rid of the excess water. So there are those plants that have specialized openings or pores known as hydrothodes through which excess water is lost in liquid form in the form of droplets in a process known as gutation. So it's important to note that uh, these hydrothodes are not present in all plants. It's only specialized plants, the ones that have evolved in areas that have high humidity and hence there is a need to get rid of the excess water. Remember, it is only through the loss of water that the plant is able to absorb more water from the soil and in the process also acquire mineral salts. So, when transpiration cannot take place, then these plants are forced to get rid of water in the form of liquid, a process known as gutation, through specialized opening known as hydrothodes. Otherwise, the higher the humidity, the lower the rate of transpiration in an environment, and the lower the humidity, the higher the rate of transpiration is bound to be. A third factor is wind. Wind simply refers to air in motion. Now, as water evaporates from the surfaces of the spongy mesophyll cells, again, depending on the saturation deficits, these water molecules will then diffuse out through the open stomata. Now, the stronger the wind, the faster the rate at which these water molecules are going to be carried away, thereby establishing and maintaining a great diffusion gradient between the inside and the outside. So the wind serves to carry away water vapor as fast as it diffuses out of the leaves through the stoma. And in this way, the air around the leaves is prevented from becoming saturated with water vapor. So the stronger the wind, the faster the rate at which the water vapor is carried out as soon as it diffuses out, and thereby maintaining a very steep saturation deficit 
which will encourage loss of water in the form of vapor from the plant. So you can say that uh, the more windy the conditions are, the higher the rate of transpiration. Because so that on a windy day, the rate of transpiration is high. But when on a day when there is very little movement of air, then the rate of transpiration will be relatively lower because of the fact that uh, the wind would carry away water vapor, but when the air is not moving as fast, then the water vapor tends to accumulate around the stomach, thereby reducing the saturation deficit, and in this way, greatly reducing the rate of transpiration. So wind does affect the saturation deficit by blowing away the water vapor. But if there's no wind, the water vapor accumulates around the stomach, and this then reduces the saturation deficit, thereby reducing the rate of transpiration. The fourth factor is light intensity. Light intensity affects transpiration rate by influencing the stomatal opening. The stomata of most plants open fully during daylight, that is in the presence of light. And the higher the intensity, the greater the opening. So when the stoma open, the region inside the stoma, that is the substomatal air, is exposed to the external environment such that water vapor can move faster. Can water molecules will diffuse fast from the substomatal chamber and into the surrounding environment. So the open stoma, like I say, you have open stoma, exposes the inside of the leaf to the dry environment, which will then promote loss of water in the form of diffusion. So in the presence of light, the stoma open, and as they open, they expose the inside of the leaf to the surroundings, and this will then facilitate loss of water vapor through the open stomata to the surrounding. So light intensity does encourage loss of water by transpiration in the sense that light brings about the opening of the stoma. The fifth factor is atmospheric pressure. Now, the lower the atmospheric pressure, the greater the rate of evaporation. And the greater the rate of evaporation, the faster the rate of transpiration. So atmospheric pressure has an effect on the rate of evaporation. So when the atmospheric pressure is low, there is bound to be a high rate of transpiration. Plants that are found at high altitudes where atmospheric pressure is very low, like the highlands, are likely to lose a lot of water due to the high rate of transpiration. Such plants tend to have adaptations to minimize water loss. And hence, many plants that grow in high altitude tend to have narrow leaves or needle-like leaves to reduce the surface area exposed for transpiration.